Hi, Brian here, Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I want to show you this car here. This is a i30, but it's what's called a deluxe launch model. This video might be useful for somebody if you're looking at this particular car, obviously, but if you're looking to see what the difference is, because the deluxe launch is kind of a rare sort of model, uh, I'm going to show you the differences starting off in the video, the difference between it and the normal deluxe, and then we'll continue on and we'll look around the features of the car in terms of the inside, outside, and just general driving. But I'm just going to start off with the specifics of the deluxe launch. Just before we get started, if there is any information you want on this specific car, give me a shout 086-843-1945, call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits. Or if you're watching on YouTube and you think the video is useful, please do like and subscribe because it lets me know that the video is useful. And if there's anything I missed, just let me know in the comment section below. Okay, let's start off with the main features on Deluxe Launch. So what I've done is I've just pulled up this one here. This is a Deluxe, which is a very, very popular model. And then Deluxe Launch is a very, very... Um, rear model actually so the reason is deluxe launch came out when the car was initially launched first and so what i think happened was they wanted to bring in the deluxes but they couldn't get them they could get these deluxe launch ones so in fairness they brought these ones in at the price of that one so basically the people that bought these got a great deal because they were getting basically that spec there for the price of that one there after a couple of weeks at the very start of the launch of the car then the deluxe model started arriving over so this deluxe launch was disbanded then so that's why there's not too many of them around at a glance at the front you'd really be forgiven for seeing very very little difference because there is very little difference but it's once you start looking at the lighting on the car so if you look at this one here which is a deluxe model you'll see there is a daytime running light just down low along through here with a front fog light you have a dipped headlight in through here and you have your indicator recessed in up through there and inside in the headlamp then you've got a full light in through here and you've also got a cornering light over there if you look at deluxe launch however you'll see there is two leds in through here which are your dipped headlights and also down through here your indicator is now separate and it's on an led similarly then the full light as well as the cornering light in through here are also led as well so what's my obsession with LEDs? Well, in my opinion, LEDs just make a car look much more upmarket than a normal one, and the lighting is much better from them also. The second thing, Deluxe Launch has a reverse camera, nothing unusual there because the Deluxe also has a camera, but the difference with Deluxe Launch is it also gets parking sensors on the rear. So you've got a visual aid, but you've also got an audible aid when you're going backwards. So Deluxe, like this car, is going to get reverse camera only, whereas Deluxe Launch will get the camera and also the sensors too. The next thing then on a deluxe launch, you get an armrest in through here with a drinks holder, which as you can see is absent on a deluxe model. And the thing is, I'm not trying to talk down to the deluxe because the deluxe is actually an excellent spec, you know, for uh, that kind of price point on a car. It's just this one has some little bonuses and they're just limited edition. So that's what's nice about it. And because deluxe launch had that armrest, it also got what's called a ski through. So it means you can put really long, awkward objects up through the center of the car, which is dead handy if you're into skiing or just carrying around long, slender objects which i don't even know what they could be looking through here this is the deluxe car we're sitting in so it has air conditioning which is great along through here very simple analog controls but when we get into a deluxe launch then we have a digital display setup so first of all i can have different temperatures on each side of the car which is pretty cool or i can program the car to get me to a certain temperature and it'll do it all by itself front and rear windscreen demisters in through here as well back to the deluxe again you'll see the driver's seat has a height adjuster but the passenger seat is fixed in terms of height. If we take a look then at Deluxe Launch, you've got lumbar support, which is an additional extra, which hardens up the back part of the seat. And then the passenger also gets a height adjustable seat as well. God almighty, it's warm. Anyway, so that hopefully will explain the differences between a Deluxe Launch and the normal Deluxe model you see around. So what we're going to do in the rest of the video is we're going to have a look at the car in general now, which are features on the outside, inside, and we're going to go for a drive. Starting with the boot, because I want to throw my jacket in here. The first thing is the boot is in nice condition. So for anyone that's looking at this particular vehicle, I don't think he'll be unhappy with condition. And down through here, then you have a spare wheel. But the second thing is by sliding the boot, I can actually make it deeper. And when I do that, you end up gaining mm, about that much in height. Which I know looks like a small about, but to be fair, when you want to get something awkward into the back of the car, believe me, small little extras like that make a difference. However, if you're not going to use that depth, then you're better off keeping it at the higher level because it means you're not stooping down as far into the boot when you're dropping stuff into it. In terms of how the car looks in the rear, I quite like the rear end of these cars compared to the other one. It's nice and square and symmetrical. I like the fact that there's a black spoiler up high. Everything's colour coded, as you can see. And fire red is actually a very nice colour in this car. Small things, even just the way that there's a black spoiler along here, which matches the black along the rear bumper too. And because we're in the deluxe launch model, all around the windows is completely black instead of chrome, which I think matches the black on the rear of the car that we saw already. Looking down the side of the car then, you'll see the wheels are a nice 16 inch 
alloy wheel however they are what's called diamond cut which on a sunny day like today gives them a lovely reflective shiny finish or even at night time under artificial light see i told you they were shiny Getting around onto the front of the car then, we talked about those headlights. I have such an obsession with nice headlights like LEDs. I just think they make the car totally different and totally upmarket. Anyway, the engine that's on the front of this car, which is generally where you'd find an engine. Don't know why I said that, but anyway. The engine that's on these, 1.6 diesel, that is 115 horsepower, 180 euros a year for road tax. Really reliable. We've sold loads of these cars for people commuting up and down the road. Very, very reliable unit. Um, and an eager engine to drive. You'll see when we go for a drive, actually, there's quite a decent bit of power in it. Actually, let's go for a drive right now. So the first thing is make reach. I go up, down, in, out. And the next thing then, as we saw, I have height adjuster around my seat, which is fine. So nice to allow to get quite low. And then there's also lumbar support, which actually does make a big difference on a long journey. In terms of power, let's see what it's like going on the motorway from zero up as far as 120 kilometers an hour. So they do excel really well, there's good power in the engine, but you know, what's quite nice about these is it's just a really eager engine. You put your foot down and there's this kind of, just pull straight away. So there's really uh, immediate kind of responsiveness in it. But anyway, look, no point in me telling you that, you come try it yourself. They're also a lovely car on a back road. I do like driving, but I am fairly fond of driving on a back road, not fast or anything like that, but just, you know, turns and bumps and compressions and things like that. That's what makes it interesting. So independent uh, suspension in the rear um, i30s always were uh, quite a nice car to drive and even actually the i20 uh, there's a lovely chassis on that car as well it's just really kind of sure footed and enjoyable to drive so again anyway don't take my word for it come try the car yourself and you'll see but people just do enjoy driving these cars when they test drive them again a section like this it's just enjoyable i'm not going fast but it's fun and this particular example drives really well as well. So the car has had one lady that owned it from new and suspension and a gearbox and clutch and all those kind of things. Everything feels right. But to be fair, before it leaves here anyway, it's going to get a detailed service and check over, which means when you leave here, you'll be leaving in a car that doesn't need any money spent in it for quite some time. And you're going to have a warranty and roadside assist package until 2022. Just before we get into the car, there's one other thing I want to show you. The key here basically allows you to control the lights so you can basically turn the lights off or similarly, you can turn the lights back on. And that also allows you to control things like the wing mirrors. So I can pull the wing mirrors out or similarly, I can lock it and pull the wing mirrors back in. Getting into the car in terms of the rear. Oh, okay, so first thing is in terms of six foot, this is how much headroom I have. This is how much legroom I have. I got a kangaroo pocket here. I got a kangaroo pocket over here because it is deluxe launch. I got the armrest in through here and then down over here, I'll have Isofix and underneath my own bum here, I'm gonna have Isofix as well. Most cars do have Isofix these days, so it is quite common, but some older cars still don't. Anyway, three head restraints, three three-point safety belts and condition is quite nice as the previous owner didn't have people in the back of the car as much. Sitting in the front of the car, this is the view that you're going to have off to your right, electrics for windows and for mirrors, brightness of the dash and lane keep assist or lane change warning. Which is set in the settings here, so I can go in and I can choose the type of driving assist I want, of which one of them is basically going to manipulate your steering and actually actively try and keep the car between the white lines and the road, or the other one is just going to warn you when you drift out of lane without using your indicator. Back on to other controls then, wipers. Over through here, the trip information that we saw already, which is going to give you things like, we'll say average speed, fuel efficiency, uh, current speed uh, the car is traveling, the lane keep assist, or servicing due, or even tire pressures. And then down through here, cruise control. And on the left-hand side, Bluetooth controls in through there. The headlights are automated, which is cool, which means they come on at nighttime, but the second part is they're automated for dip. So when you meet traffic, they actually dip themselves, and when you go into an unlit area, they go full by themselves, and they actually work really well. Off to the left then, you got the floating dash. So first thing is the camera's in through there. You've got parking sensors that go with that. I've got phone information in through here, or I've got media if I want to stream music or play music from USB down through there, and general radio setup in through here. And it is a touch screen setup as well. The climate control, as we talked about then earlier, allows dual zone climate. And below there, we already talked about USB Six connectors. Forward gears and reverse is up and over. And then we have drinks holders in through there with an armrest. And in terms of safety, there is a passenger and driver's airbag. 
There is an airbag up here. There is an airbag in the side of the seat. There's steel bars for side impact protection. There's emergency brake assist, emergency brake distribution. And they are all things that basically allow you to slam on the brakes, but still control the car. So have full control under full braking pressure. There you have it. That is our 2017 deluxe launch Hyundai i30. If you want information on this car, please do not hesitate to give me a shout. Brian is my name, 086-843-1945. And we are a family-run business in operation for almost 70 years. Like I was saying, if you're watching on YouTube and you think the video is useful, please do like and subscribe because it lets me know the videos are useful. But if you want me to do something better or something different or if there's information that I've missed, just let me know and I'll do a new video to cater for your needs. So thanks for taking time to watch. Hopefully the car is of interest.